All right, back to it. It had found the pot and knife by the fire where Brian had left them and scooped them outside. Brian had washed them both in the lake when he finished eating, but the smell of the food was still in the air. Working around the side of the opening, the bear had bumped the pan against the rock at the same moment that it had settled its rump in the entrance of Brian's shelter. Brian pulled back a foot. Hey, get out of there, he yelled, and kicked the bear in the rear. That means his booty. <laughs> he was not certain what he expected. Perhaps the bear would turn and realize its mistake and then sheepishly trundle away. Or that the bear would just run off. With no hesitation, not even the smallest part of the second delay, the bear turned and ripped the entire log side off the shelter with one sweep of a front paw and a moist woof out of his nostrils. Brian found himself looking up at the bear, turned now to look down on the boy, and with another snort, the bear swung his left paw again and scooped Brian out of the hollow of the rock and flung him end over end for 20 feet. Then the bear slipped forward and used both front paws to pack Brian in a kind of ball and whap him down to the edge of the water, where he lay, dazed, thinking in some way that he was still back in the shelter. The bear stopped and studied Brian for a long minute, then turned back to the ransacking of the camp looking for where that delicious smell had come from. It sat back on its haunches and felt the air with its nostrils, located another faint odor stream and followed it down to the edge of the water where the fish pool lay. It dug in the water, not more than 10 feet from where Brian now lay, trying to figure out if his arms and legs were still all attached to where they had been before, and pulled up the rabbit skull, still with bits of meat on it, and swallowed it whole. It dug around in the water again and found the guts and ate them and went back to rummaging around in the pool. And when nothing more could be found, the bear looked once more at Brian, at the camp, and then walked away without looking back. Other than some minor scratches where the bear's claws had slightly scraped him, it was more a boxing action than a clawing one. Brian was in one piece. He was still jolted and confused about just exactly which end was up. But most of all, he was grateful. He knew that the bear could have done much more damage than it had. He had seen a bear tear a stump out of the ground like a giant tooth when it was looking for grub worms and ants. This bear could just as easily have killed him and had actually held back. But as the day progressed, Brian found himself stiffening and by the time he was ready for his bed, his whole body ached and he knew he would be covered with bruises from the encounter. He would have to find some way to protect himself, some weapon. The fire worked well when it was burning, but it had burned down. His hatchet and knife would have done nothing more than make the bear really angry, something he did not like to think about, and his bow was only good for smaller game. He had never tried to shoot anything bigger than a fool bird or a rabbit with it and doubted that the bow would push the arrow deep enough to do anything, but again, make the bear really mad. He bundled in his bag that night. At the end of the two weeks of warm weather, he kept putting wood on the fire, half afraid the bear would come back, all the while he tried to think of a solution. But in reality, the bear was not his primary adversary, nor was the wolf, nor any animal. Brian had become his own worst enemy because in all the business of hunting, fishing, and surviving, he had forgotten the primary rule. Always, always pay attention to what was happening. Everything in nature means something, and he had missed the warnings that summer was ending. Had in many ways already ended, and what was coming would be the most dangerous thing he had faced since the plane crash. Scene. Okay, so a couple things I want to talk about before I get to the questions. Um, so we see again how the setting is messing with Brian. And we talked about it in your answers yesterday where you talked about how um, the forest and the cold and all those things were affecting Brian. This time, the, the forest, well, not so much more the forest, but more so what was in the forest that was messing with Brian. Um, we saw that animals are starting to become a problem for Brian, more so the bear in this chapter. Um, and it became so much a problem that it almost hurt him very, well, it did hurt him very badly. It almost was worse. Um, so with that being said, I kind of want to focus more, yes, on the setting, but more so on how the setting helped Brian's character develop. So with that being said, the first question I want to talk about is when Brian did notice that interaction with the wolves and he saw the wolves pee on that log and 
when that happened, no other wolves went over there but those two wolves. So then Brian took it upon himself and he peed on his log and then the wolves went over there and then they didn't go in Brian's territory anymore. So with that being said, when Brian did that and he peed on the log, after he saw the wolves do it, what what do we what does that show about Brian? What does that show that he learned or what does that show that he's doing now in this part of the book? Um and then after we get to that, I also want to talk about um kind of what was the author trying to talk about with the bear and the wolf situation. So earlier in the when I was reading, I had you do a stop and jot and I had you talk about why didn't the bear stop in the tank the territory the same way that the wolf didn't do it um and what we should have kind of noticed there is that the story talked about how there's bear wolf there's bear rules and there's wolf rules so the wolf and brian might have had the understanding that hey we're not going to go in your territory we know that you did your business there that's your place but the bear didn't care so when we get there, we have to understand that the bear wolves and the wolf rules are different. So now, adding on to that, later on in the chapter, we see that the wolf, the animals are causing problems for Brian. But even though when Brian had those issues with the wolf, I'm sorry, when Brian had those issues with the bear and it almost killed him, still at the end of the chapter, the author said that the, the wolf the bear was not Ryan's worst enemy. So what do you think that the author was trying to say when even after all this stuff has happened in the chapter and Brian lo loses his food, I think his shelter gets messed up and he has all these bruises and aches on his body and you, you see he was scared to go to sleep. He had to sleep by the fire the whole time, which he wasn't, I'm sure he wasn't doing before. He was, he was waking up in the middle of the night, keep adding more fuel to the fire to make sure it was going the whole night. And he's doing all these things to protect himself from the bear. And still, the author says that's not his worst, worst enemy. So what do you think the author meant when he said that the bear or the wolf or anything else wasn't his worst enemy? It was actually something else. And then adding on to that, for the last question I want you to answer for today is if the bear wasn't Brian's worst enemy, as we see in this chapter, what is Brian's worst enemy? And why do you think that's Brian's worst enemy? So. Those are your four questions. Like I said, you can write them down. You can take a picture and send them to Mr. Jones. You can um, type them out, send them to Mr. Jones, or you can just talk with your family or whoever's li or your family, friends, whoever's with you at the moment. If you guys want to talk with your other classmates, if you guys have each other's phone numbers or you want to do that, that's fine too. But as long as you're discussing these questions, it's good with me. Um, so yeah, that's chapter two. Um, be on the lookout for chapter three tomorrow after you listen to this and answer the questions. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, two challenges. So number one, first one was, it was a very close vote um, for the glasses. And we'll do the glasses vote again. I want more people to vote this time. Um, and as you see, option five won. So I'll go through the six options again. And then you can vote in the comments. You can vote on Dojo. Um, or any other way you want to communicate with Mr. Jones and tell him which glasses you think he should wear for tomorrow's video. And to up the ante, um, just so that I know that we are watching and we're watching the video all the way through. If you comment your vote for what glasses Mr. Jones should wear, however many comments that I get on this video in promotion of healthy living and still staying active during the Corona um, shelter in place times, however many comments are on this video to tell Mr. Jones what glasses you think he should wear, that's how many push-ups Mr. Jones would do. And I'll put the push-ups at the end of the video tomorrow to prove to you that Mr. Jones did the push-ups. So if you want Mr. Jones to do 100 push-ups, get 100 people to watch this video and comment which glasses he should have. Um, I want a lot of people watching this video so that we're still learning and reading. So with that being said, tell your friends, tell your classmates, tell whoever, watch. And with that being said, um, oh, let me go through the options. So these are option five again. Um, I think these are option one, the circles. I think these are option two. Option three, they look the same, but these are clear. The other ones were gold. Option four, option five again. And then just to be funny, please don't vote for these. 
option six for the sunglasses. So those are your options. Tell your friends, vote, vote, vote. Listen to the video. Listen to the video. Thank you for tuning in. Answer the questions and I will see you tomorrow.